Hello coders and thank you for joining us for our second tutorial in the Unity scripting series. My name is Darren and today we're going to do a little scripting project that will teach you how to get your game objects moving and interacting in your game scenes. This lesson will be split into two parts. When we're done, your project might look a little something like this. In completing this short tutorial, you will learn how to move and rotate your objects in a couple of different ways. In part two, you will learn how to modify variables in your script from the inspector panel and we will make a basic camera controller that watches as the cubes race by. Let's begin by going to our project panel, right clicking and creating two new scripts. One for the character controller and one for the camera controller. These scripts are going to serve the purpose of what their name suggests. The character controller is going to move and rotate the cubes while the camera controller is going to stay focused on the cubes as they move across the playing field. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open our scripts and I'm going to copy and paste the code from our last tutorial to remind me what each event function does. This way, I can structure my code more appropriately. Alright, now before we move on, if you don't completely understand Unity 3D components, you might want to go to our channel and view the Unity Basics tutorial. So as I said before, there are a couple of ways that we can move our cubes. And either way we do it, we're going to want to access our cubes transform component. This component has two main members that will help us move our objects, one being the translate method, which accepts a vector 3 direction, or we could directly access the transform's position vector 3 property, and this way we can force movements along a particular directional axis. Our translate and position members do not utilize physics for their movement, so we are going to simply put this code in our update event function. Let's start by typing transform.translate and passing vector 3.forward times 10 times time.delta time to its parameter list. You might be asking, how does this script know that the transform component belongs to the object we want to move? Well, for the script to even run, it must be attached to some object in the hierarchy. Or, in other words, it must be in the game. For whichever game object the script is going to be attached to, the transform keyword refers to that object's transform component. The translate method is going to accept a vector 3 which tells the transform which direction it is going to move in. This vector 3 may vary depending on how you add your object to the scene. By default though, we will just use the vector 3.forward, which is the vector 0, 0, 1. We are multiplying this vector 3 by 10 so our movement has a larger magnitude, but we are simply multiplying our vector by a scalar. So if any of our vector's axes have 0 values, they will remain zero and the object will not move on those axes. Otherwise, if the axis value is one, it will be multiplied by our scalar 10 and move a little bit more quickly on that axis. Next, we use time.delta time. Recall that update is called each frame and realize that during gameplay, our frame rate fluctuates. Therefore, we do not want to rely on our frame rate alone to update our game objects. Instead, we can move relative to time.delta time, which is Unity's built-in timer. This way, we can achieve more predictable movements. If you decide not to use time.delta time, you may notice that your objects move a lot faster. But realize that they're not just moving faster, they're moving based on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. So you might not notice it at first, but if your frame rate changes, then the speed of your object will change as well. Finally, we can start testing our code. Go up to the Game Object tab in Unity and find the tab to create a new 3D cube. Now place this cube wherever you want it to start moving from. Now find the script we created in the project panel and drag and drop it to our object in the scene view. Now when we click the object, we can see that the character controller script component is attached to it. Let's orient our camera so that we can see our object and run the game to see what happens. So that covers the translate method for moving our objects. The other way is to update the transform position directly. To do this, we can just add our velocity vector to our position. Just type transform.position plus equals vector 3.forward times 10 times time.delta time. Now I can just comment out the translate line of code and go back to Unity to run the game again to see if our results are similar. Okay, so that looks pretty much the same. Now you might be wondering which one of these methods of movement is best or why translate even exists if we can just modify the position directly. Soon you will see one major difference. 
Now let's get our object rotating. To do this, we access the transform member rotate and pass it a vector 3. It is similar to translate except our vector 3 is going to modify which axis the object rotates on. Type out transform.rotate and pass vector 3.up times 100 times time.delta time as a parameter. This will rotate the object on the y axis. Now I'll run the game to see what the results are. Okay, so this is what we might expect to happen. The cube moves forward as it rotates, but you're about to see the difference between using dot translate and dot position to move your objects. Let's go back to our code and comment out the position line and uncomment the translate line. Now we will watch our object move with translate while it rotates on the y axis. Okay, so why is this happening? Well, in Unity, you have two coordinate systems to work with. One is local and the other is global. Each object has its own local coordinate system. From our scripts, we can manipulate objects either on their local coordinates or on the global coordinates. Translate operates on the object's local coordinate system. As the cube rotates on the y-axis, the z-axis is changed, which is what the object moves on. To show this, click on the cube in the scene view while the game runs. You'll see the z-axis in blue as it changes. I'll go back to the script to use the position method for moving the cube. Now I'll run again to show that the cube z-axis does not determine the direction in which the cube moves because it is not using the transform's coordinate system. You can press X to toggle between the local and global coordinates of a game object to show that this is happening. Alright, that's going to conclude our tutorial on translation and rotation. In the next tutorial, we are going to set up our camera controller to look at our cube as it passes by. We are also going to talk about how to modify script variables from Unity's inspector panel at runtime. If you liked this video, show us your support by subscribing. You will get all the latest videos on JavaScript, C Sharp, Concrete 5, and Unity. As always, this has been our Renaissance Coders tutorial. Thanks for watching.